I think at this point, we all expect the Chicago Bears to have a top three pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. And a lot of you guys have asked me the question, should the Bears keep the pick or trade the pick? And I know we're looking ahead. I know the season's still going on. But I wanted to talk about it. So that's what we're going to do. What is going on, y'all? Follow Sports Talk. Back at it with another video talk. And of course, it's the NFL here to talk about the Chicago Bears. So if you're a Bears fan, hit the big red subscribe button down below, people. Make sure you're following me on all my social media platforms. And as always, hit the bell icon so you're notified every time I drop a new video. Let's get into it. All right, so a very straightforward question. If the Chicago Bears end up having the number two overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, should they keep their pick or should they trade their pick? And my answer is, drum roll please, I'm doing a drum roll if you couldn't tell by the way, trade the pick, all right, yeah, um, a lot of you guys probably guessed this, I, you know, hinted at it in a, another one of my videos, and uh, yeah, folks, um, I didn't have to think long and hard about this one, I'm trading that number two overall pick, I'm sorry, um, it's just too damn valuable, and the amount of assets you can get for that pick especially when you don't need a quarterback nope not keeping that so let me explain and hopefully i'll convince you guys in this upcoming draft there are two quarterbacks kind of are expected to go in the first round two quarterbacks with first round grades and those are bryce young and cj stroud bryce young projected to be the number one overall pick and we all know the Houston Texans will most likely have that number one overall pick. And they badly, badly need a quarterback. And so I would expect them to take Bryce Young. So let's assume that happens. So Bryce Young is off the board. Texans have their future quarterback, or so they hope. And now the Bull Bear. I can't even talk. The Bears are on the clock. I almost said the Bulls. Wrong sport wrong, uh, on that one. The Bears are on the clock. And so they, in terms of positional needs, don't need... A quarterback, Justin Fields, has shown enough to certainly uh, be considered as a franchise quarterback for the Bears. Uh, and so you definitely are going in the next year with Justin Fields as your quarterback. And so if Justin Fields is the answer for you at quarterback and you don't need one, you're certainly not going to take one. So what positions do you need? Well, you need a lot. You need defensive line, you need offensive line, you need receivers, you need secondary, like you need a lot of positions. A lot. It's not just a one piece away from a contender team that the Bears are, okay? So, if that is the case, uh, you take a look at the board and a lot of people are kind of looking at two guys for the Bears to take that um, Jalen Dern, the defensive lineman from Georgia, and Will Anderson, the edge from Alabama. Two defensive players, and certainly they would help because the Bears need help on the defensive line in the worst way. It might be the biggest need for the Bears, I would argue, the offensive line, but defensive line right there with it. So those guys are kind of the guys that if you stayed at that spot, you would most likely take one of them. They're game changers for sure. Um, I, I think both of these guys have immense upside, and I think they both – could potentially be studs. But here's why I'm trading that pick. Let's go back and take a look at some of these trades that have happened where teams have moved up to get a quarterback and get a number one or a number two overall pick because that's really why teams move up. And, you know, this one, not that long ago, the RG3 trade. You guys remember Robert Griffin III, who the Redskins, or formerly the Redskins, took in that draft with Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck was the number one overall pick. And then, Boom, on the clock, uh, number two pick. I believe it was um, the Rams, if I'm mistaken, if I'm remembering correctly, that had that number two pick. And then so the the Redskins traded up, and I'll call them the Redskins, but I know that are the commanders now. They traded up to go ahead and get that number two overall pick. Folks, do you know what they gave up for that number two overall pick? They, they were the number six pick, by the way. And to move up, they gave up their own pick, the number six pick, uh, and two more first-round picks. So we're talking three first-round picks and a second-round pick. All right? To move up four spots. Four spots. And take RG3, who ended up obviously not working out. So I can have one player right here with the number two overall pick. But if it's not a quarterback, it's not worth it. Because I could have one player or I could have four or more. 
because of how many picks you, you would get. Like, folks, there's so many teams that need a quarterback that could potentially move up. It's insane. Why would you not want to go ahead and trade this pick? And I, and I know you might be thinking, Fives, what if these guys end up being studs and like we're talking about a game changer on the defensive line? What if we're talking about getting like the next Aaron Donald? Well, here, here we go. Like, it's very rare, right? So let's pump the brakes on that. But also, we're just talking about impact, right? In the NFL, quarterback is the most valuable position. There's positions where even if you are great at it, you don't really have much of an impact on wins, right? I'll give you another example. The Jacksonville Jaguars just last year, we can learn from them. They had the number one overall pick, right? Number one overall pick, and they had their future franchise quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. All right. And they drafted at the number overall pick. They took Trayvon Walker, a defensive player. Well, Trayvon Walker, currently through the season, we got a couple games left, has 3.5 sacks. George Karlaftis, who the Chiefs took at number 30th, has the same amount of sacks as Trayvon Walker at 3.5. So when we're talking about production, like nothing is guaranteed. The only time it makes sense to go ahead and keep a pick or trade up for a pick is if you're going to get your franchise quarterback because that is the most important position in football. Most important position. You know, I could argue maybe a left tackle if you need that because it's really quarterback, left tackle, yeah, maybe edge rusher. But at the end of the day, I will have some team that's going to be desperate enough to move up for a C.J. Stroud or maybe Bryce Young and I'm going to go ahead and ask for the farm if I'm Ryan Pulse. And I'm going to get it. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm, I'm trading this pick. Uh, that's where I'm at. Maybe maybe I change my thoughts as we get closer to the draft and the season ends. But right now, folks, I don't see that happening. I, I think I'm staying with the scenario of trading this pick. I still haven't heard a good enough argument for keeping it. Tell me what you guys think. Do you think they should keep it? If they should... Tell me why. I want to hear the argument because I don't believe so. So that's where I'm at. Let me know what you guys think as always. Thanks for watching.